And can you imagine to teach your kids to pray that way? No. <laughs> God, thank you for my sexuality. Help me to manage it in a way that honors me and honors other people. I know some have such strong convictions about alcohol because they were raised by an alcoholic father. You know, my mom is a great example of that. And I love my grandpa, but he had a lot of grief in his life and with his mother dying at a young age and then his father and, and uh, being left by some of his siblings. And he was raised by an alcoholic cousin. So alcohol is how my grandpa managed all his grief in his life. He wasn't a bad guy. He just used alcohol to manage that. And so my mom's opinion of alcohol being raised by an alcoholic father is just pretty black and white. I mean, there's no gray area. So for someone to see Jesus turning water into wine and toasting at a wedding, that would be a foreign concept because of the abuse or the hurt that's been caused by that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, so, I, so some of the psychologists that are faith-based, like I've mentioned, I, I think they're trying to offer another way to see our humanity as good and healthy, but can be mismanaged. Don't hear me wrong. It can be mismanaged. And I know it firsthand and it's not the better way. Uh, and so learning how to navigate that the better way, um, I think is really important and having those honest conversations. Well, and I think so now the time that we're living with, with pornography being so prevalent because maybe there, the chance of mismanaging it or being exposed to so many sexual things was less 30 or 40, 50 years ago. But now like everyone, every kid is being exposed to pornography. And so the chances of them mismanaging it are just skyrocketing it, skyrocketing. So we have to have that conversation with them, would you say? Oh, for sure. And, and, and don't you want your kid coming to you? I mean, this is, this is what we talk about in the book, being safe and learning how to train and guide our kids instead of shaming and punishing. So don't you want your kid coming to you and saying, hey, dad, I saw porn on the phone like you said I might. <laughs> and, I, 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 and the kid knows that dad is the safest person or mom's the safest person. And uh, I, I just want to manage this right. So could you help me with my settings or uh, figure out what I did because, uh, you know, because home is the safe place to talk about that. And again, a lot of us weren't raised in those homes where we can even feel honest. Now, that kid, my goodness, to, for a kid to want to do that to their mom and dad, kudos to mom and dad. Because they, you know, and I think this is where, well, I, I can get on such a, a, we don't think God has our best interest. We think God is trying to punish us for our sinful behavior rather than welcoming us to say, I want to show you the better way, bring it right here to me. And that was a whole different paradigm I had about God. I had to see that God is sexual. We're made in their image, male and female. The ability to recreate comes from the divine. So not hiding my sexual mistakes from God, but saying, God, help me manage this. I think that's a beautiful prayer, right? And can you imagine to teach your kids to pray that way? No. <laughs> God, thank you for my sexuality. Help me to manage it in a way that honors me and honors other people. Because when we honor ourselves and honor others, we always honor God.